So today's format is different from previous convocations where we've had multiple speakers sharing a lot of information and very similar message. This year, I'm pleased to change it up and welcome the National Teacher of the Year finalist, Ohio Teacher of the Year, our very own Liberty Tree Elementary Art Teacher, Jonathan Jurovich, to share his insight and perspective. Thanks, thank you. It is very different in elementary than in secondary. <laughs> Both enjoyable, just different, right? Yeah. Well, hi, good morning. Um, a year ago, I was sitting in this audience and my mind was racing, just like yours, about all of the unfinished projects that I needed to get done before kids walked into my classroom the very next day. And even now you might be thinking, come on little plaid guy, hurry this up, I got stuff to do. <laughs> I know I will, just hang tight. While I sat here, I also had other thoughts weighing in my heart. I had just completed my interview as a finalist for Ohio Teacher of the Year, and I was waiting for them to call and say, thanks, but uh, we went in another direction. But that wasn't the call I received, and in the weeks that followed, I was named the 2018 Ohio Teacher of the Year at an assembly in front of my incredible staff and students at Liberty Tree Elementary. And then in January, I was named one of four finalists for National Teacher of the Year. Talk about a year that is unexpected. Sorry for the spoiler alert, in case you didn't know, but I wasn't named the 2018 National Teacher of the Year. In, um, instead, if you haven't looked her up, you need to. The National Teacher of the Year is Mandy Manning. She is the Washington State Teacher of the Year, the National Teacher of the Year, and my friend. She's a remarkable human being, and I'm so proud that she is representing all of us and our students. And I would be doing this year a disservice if I didn't at least take a minute to reflect on the events of the past 10 months and to say thank you to all of you for all of your continued support, encouragement, and kindness throughout this entire experience. In January, I met all of the other 54 state teachers of the year at Google's headquarters, which was an experience unto itself. It wasn't like we saw anything outlandish or top secret, but there were so many windows, everything was new and bright, <laughs> and you could eat whatever you wanted from the cafeteria for free. <laughs> That's what I took away from that, right? <laughs> and yes, I know there are only 50 states, but this program also includes Washington, D.C., the Department of Defense Education Activity, and the territories America Samoa, Northern Mariana Islands, and Guam. And quickly, my relationships with these people from across the United States were fortified in our similarities. These state teachers of the year are very normal people. They're just like you and me, educators that are passionate about their students and believe that meaningful relationships are the cornerstone of their work. The other day, I met up with a friend that I haven't seen in a while, and he asked, what has been your favorite experience from the past year? I thought long and hard and I answered, the relationships I've built, the friendships I've made with the other state teachers of the year. And that didn't land very well with him. He wanted specifics. And I thought long and hard and I gathered up a few anecdotes for you today. I spoke with the Ohio House of Representatives and once even testified about my experiences with the teacher evaluation system in our state. I spent time in Washington, D.C where I talked with Senator Sherrod Brown and thanked him for his support of public education in our state. And he talked about the excitement of the opening of Berlin High School. I visited the US Department of Education as the group of us spent time talking with the Education Secretary, Betsy DeVos, about issues, celebrations, and challenges within our education system. And I sat on a panel with Secretary DeVos Labor Secretary Acosta, and the other three finalists for National Teacher of the Year. I spoke personally about school safety, the importance of a high quality arts education for all students, and how there is a critical need for social emotional learning to be intentionally taught in our schools. It was in that moment that it was clear to me 
that we are indeed the experts in the room. <laughs> and you are the experts in the room. Your firsthand knowledge, unbelievable stories, and expertise needs to be shared with the world. And I truly hope you know that. And take this charge to do so. And then I met with the president. In the past, all of the state teachers of the year had a moment and a photo opportunity with the president of the United States. But we found out the day before that only the four finalists were going to have this opportunity, and I knew this was my chance to speak from my heart. When the doors opened, I was directed to his left side, my wife to the right. A picture was taken, and then we were motioned towards the door. But I took that chance to say, my name is Jonathan Jervich, the 2018 Ohio Teacher of the Year. He said, Ohio, good state. <laughs> it is. I continued, I teach my students about respect and empathy, and we as the adults need to model these behaviors for our students. His response was, that's good, I like that. <laughs> but it's true. All of us, from the President of the United States to the art teacher, to the parents, custodians, our interactions with strangers, may we model the behaviors we want to see of our kids. I had the wonderful opportunity to attend conferences focusing on teacher leadership and equity in Seattle, New Orleans, where I met an artist I've taught my students about for the past 10 years and Las Vegas. <laughs> and then a few short weeks ago, I went to space camp. <laughs> yeah, like actual space camp. <laughs> Those of you that watch Double Dare as kids, you know at the prize at the end, like space camp, right? Imagine going to summer camp with 40 of your new best friends as an adult. That was space camp. <laughs> but it also opened my eyes. It opened my eyes to what it must be like to be a student in my classroom. See, I was pushed outside of my comfort zone in so many ways, with explorations of engineering, math, the sciences, and even my navigation of relationships. We oftentimes expect our students to pick up and run with our concepts, our challenges, even at the pace that we already determined. It's wonderful to be pushed outside of our wheelhouse, as long as we know we are supported and encouraged along the way. This coming year, starting tomorrow, I'll embark on a new adventure. I saw how some of the other states were utilizing their state teachers of the year, and I drafted a proposal for future teachers of the year in Ohio to have a semester sabbatical in which to focus their efforts and their work. Well, the Department of Ed was excited about the possibility of a teacher in residence, but wanted me to pilot it this school year <laughs> for a year. So I'll be stepping away from my classroom for one year and will focus on teacher leadership, teacher voice, and teacher recognition. My hope is to make a broader impact at the state level, to learn more about our state education system, and to witness firsthand the great work of teachers in Ohio. And through it all, to share what I've learned along the way. This has all been so amazingly exciting. But I want you to know that as I've traveled the country, I've had the incredible pleasure of talking about Olentangy any chance that I get. Sure, I talk about our growth, which everyone I talk to cannot comprehend the idea of redistricting and our need for it. But I don't talk about data, numbers, pie charts, rankings. I speak about you and our students. I speak about the people of Olentangy. But I'm not the only one singing your praises. A complete stranger came up to me at Panera on Saturday because he had recognized my face from the media. He told me how excited he was about my recognition and how he had moved his family to the area six years ago just for our school system. He was thrilled with his decision. This is the great news of our district, the stories that need to be shared. Recently, I was in an interview with a local reporter who said to me, oftentimes it is the negative side of education that the community hears about, not always the good news. Well, today, I wanna make sure we take time to celebrate what it is that makes Olentangy so unique so incredibly special, a place that I am proud to have spoken about at a policy summit, at Google, and yes, even the White House. 
What comes to mind for me is a quote from Helen Keller that I hold as my mission statement in life as an educator, but more importantly, as a human being. I long to accomplish a great and noble task, but it is my chief duty to accomplish small tasks as if they were great and noble. See, none of us set out to win accolades or for recognition for the work we do. Instead, we focus on the individual moments, the small victories of each and every day. So I went in search of stories, stories of incredible individuals, the unsung heroes of our district that make a difference in very real ways for our students and our community. Pauline Bennett is an Olentangy bus driver who last year once again had perfect attendance. This is a small thing that can make a huge difference in the lives of the students that she drives each day because of consistency, support, and her friendly face. And on May 4th, she went the extra mile, literally. A student left their hearing device on her bus. Pauline knew that they had a field trip that day and wanted to be sure that the student wouldn't miss a moment. She took the time to drive the hearing device to them. This small act of kindness made a true difference for the student and should be shared and celebrated. Thank you, Pauline. And there's Orange Middle School's Kelly Sawani. Kelly believes in the power of purposeful interactions as she works hard to welcome all students to her library. Her room is a space where students feel welcome. In fact, before the school day begins, there are sometimes 50 to 60 students in the library working. Principal Scott Cunningham told me, she takes care of kids no matter what. I am so lucky to get the, to work with her every day. And Kelly, our students are so fortunate to have you. Our Olentangy staff strives to provide opportunities for our students, no matter who they are or what their talents are, because they believe in supporting our students with learning opportunities tailored to their preferences and specific interests. Susan Stom from Heritage Elementary School told me about music traveler Katie Minichi. She said, I don't think I've ever worked with someone that is so accommodating and truly exemplifies doing what's best for students by always putting kids first. She is dedicated to each of her elementary buildings and puts 100% into each one. Katie volunteers her time to lead the Heritage Choir outside of the school day, and she strives to include any student that wants to participate. She then makes sure they have performances in the community that engage them in purposeful interactions that foster a sense of awareness and empathy of others, such as performing at several nursing homes throughout the year. Katie, these students may not even realize the power of these relationships that you are forging through music, but we know, and we're so grateful to you. And I want to, yeah. I want to take a moment to share with you about a student that I know personally and the acts of her teachers at Liberty Tree Elementary to make a true difference in her life. McKenna came to us as a kindergartner. Her very first day in art class, I was instantly impressed by her thoughtful conversations, her humor, and her creativity. She was with us that year because we had just opened a specialized learning center for students with autism and could offer her supports her homeschool could not at the time. She did so well that year consuming knowledge, learning independence, and continuing to flourish in classroom environments. Her parents identified that this was due to the fact that her teachers were celebrating her as an individual. Years later, she continues to make progress and develop as a learner, thanks to the supports of all of the teachers in the building. When McKenna was in the third grade, I was so impressed with her innate creativity and expressive cartoons that I worked with Rachel Weber of our SLC and Amy Hilscher, our gifted intervention specialist, to nominate her as gifted in the visual arts. She was identified as twice exceptional, a student with autism who is gifted in visual art. By taking the leap with her, this designation will follow her throughout her education and will provide unique opportunities for her to truly shine. In fact, the illustrations you've been seeing today throughout this presentation are all created by McKenna. I value her work, 
and want to engage her to see value in herself. She's encouraged to bring her quick wit and creativity to her learning, and by setting high expectations and providing her with opportunities to enrich and inspire, she's able to explore content material when before she may have only seen obstacles. In almost every speech I've given this year, I utilize her work as an opportunity to speak about her, but also the power of believing in your students as individuals. Like McKenna, we need to see in all of our students something unique, someone to be valued. We need parents to know that their students and their success is our number one priority. We believe in our students and set high standards for them to reach with our support, and we celebrate along with them when they reach their goals. McKenna's story brings to mind another quote that is really special to me. Mighty oaks from tiny acorns grow. Olentangy staff members believe in the fact that our students have such incredible potential. Their success starts when they feel safe, valued, and included. Additionally, teachers continue to grow when they feel trusted, respected, and challenged. We often hear, to be a teacher is to be a lifelong learner. And I can attest that there is no greater truth. But there are two teachers I have heard about that take this concept to a whole new level. Debbie Hyman, known as Dr. Deb, has worked to propel the academic rigor of OASIS upward. She holds a doctorate in school counseling and high school certification, and yet she needed 60 hours of physics coursework to be able to obtain a fully integrated science certi certifi certificate to work with OASIS students. And back to class she went with her focus on the students. Every moment, every moment she is in it for the students of Oasis. Administrator Jennifer Blakely said, Deb makes my life better, as well as the lives of everyone within the Oasis family. Dr. Deb, thank you for doing what is best for all students and their individual needs. Peggy Olson. Peggy Olson. Peggy is the library media specialist at Scioto Ridge Elementary School. She's been there since the building opened and is a legend to the students, parents, and staff. She goes out of her way to attend every school activity that she can so that she can spend more time with the students. But this year, she joined the fourth grade strings program. Peggy wanted to learn to play an instrument and she modeled for her students what it truly meant to be a lifelong learner. She even had the opportunity to perform alongside her students at parent concerts. Peggy, I can picture you now sitting there side by side with your students, and I have to say that I am truly proud to know you. Shanahan's Mary Ellen Buckingham is no stranger to school performances. This food service employee takes a vested interest in the lives of the students in her building. She believes in fostering meaningful relationships by attending music programs, sporting events, and anything else a student might ask her to attend. A few years back, Mary Ellen celebrated her 80th birthday. She grew up in this area and attended Olentangy schools. She knows the history of this place, has watched it change before her eyes, and understands the importance of our schools to this community. What is incredible about these staff members is that they don't put the focus back on themselves, but instead are doing incredible things, unexpected things to celebrate others. If you stop over to Freedom Trail Elementary School, you have the pleasure of spending time in conversation with head custodian, John McDonald. John takes pride in his work and that of his team, but also he has such pride for the work of the entire staff at Freedom Trail. He takes visitors on walks around the building to highlight new happenings. Many times, these tours don't focus on anything he has done as a custodian, but more so things that students or staff members have done and accomplished. In a world so often divided by competition, may we take John's lead to celebrate and encourage one another to go out of our way to tell other adults that we are proud of them. When was the last time you took that opportunity? In our big and small ways, 
we need to advocate for our profession and for one another. Within the first few minutes, minutes of my formal induction as a state teacher of the year, our group of educators were told by Sarah Brown Wessling, 2010 National Teacher of the Year, to tell our stories. We all have them. Some of them are hilarious. Some of them are heartbreaking. Some of them are downright inspirational. But these stories should be used to tell our community, our lawmakers, our circle of friends about the important work we do every single day. These stories should remind us about why we joined this remarkable field of education. And never miss the opportunity to take advantage of small moments to make a difference, an impact. It may be as simple as saying hello, greeting our students with a smile, with eye contact, with acceptance, and you're saying to them, I'm here for you, let's do this together. Or taking time to engage in relationship with one another as staff members, Taking it beyond just the, hi, how are you? I'm good, good, and then you move on. What if we called parents more often to talk about the wonderful things that happened that day at school instead of when there was a problem? Ever call a parent and they answer the phone by saying, what's wrong? I have. Or you can make a change in your wardrobe. <laughs> Eight years ago, I started wearing plaid shirts to work, and students noticed this. They began wearing them on their art day, too, in order to match me. So I made a decision, and for the past eight years, every day, I wear plaid. <laughs> it's just one small way that students at my school can connect with me. It's something they remember about me. It's such a small act that makes them feel included and connected to something so much bigger. I heard about so many other incredible staff members in our district. And don't worry, I'll be sharing the thoughtful words of recognition with them individually as well. I do want to tell you about one more person. My mentor and friend, Penny Donahue. Penny was a bold, colorful, giving art educator at Indian Springs Elementary decked out in polka dots and bright pink overalls. She inspired other educators through her kindness and creativity. Penny delighted in seeing potential in everyday items that with the power of art could become something incredible. She waged a difficult battle with cancer that took her away from us last year, just days after I was named Ohio Teacher of the Year. But in those final months, she gave me a gift, a small acorn charm, and she said, you were my acorn, and I'm so proud of the tree you have become. She always had the right things to say and the right gift to accompany it. May my work become a part of her legacy, and I challenge you to do just as she did. Take other educators under your wing to support them with words of encouragement and praise to learn from them and recognize the impact that we have on our students, and to never stop caring. Whether it's learning a new instrument, attending performances, celebrating your coworkers, or sharing a thoughtful gift, Olentangy staff members know that at the heart of our successes are meaningful connections. Connections that lead to our students becoming empowered as learners, but more importantly, as human beings. I wish you all the best as you embark on this new school year. Thank you.